features of kingdom fungi and its major classes. In mode of nutrition, we had discussed something regarding fungi having symbiotic association with the other organisms. So today in this video, we will discuss the mutual beneficial interaction of fungi with the algae and with the higher plant roots. Also, we had seen that R.H. Bittaker did not place the virus or viroids in his five kingdom classification because the characteristics which these organisms belong doesn't resemble to the characteristic of the other organisms that were placed in five kingdom classification. Okay, so today we will also discuss about virus and viroids. So, the fungi have mutual interaction or symbiotic association with the roots of higher plants and also with the algae. When fungus have intimate interaction with the algae, it is called as lichens. Now, when we speak about algae, it can be either blue-green algae or it can be green algae. We should recall that blue-green algae are cyanobacteria coming under kingdom Monera and green algae that is the plant coming under kingdom plant. Okay? So, here the fungal component is called as mycobiome and algal component is called as phycobiome. We will also recall that the study of fungi is called as mycology and the study of algae is called as phycology. So therefore the fungal partner is said to be mycobiont and algal partner is said to be phycobiont. So both fungi and algae help each other for their growth. Here, algae will prepare the food through photosynthesis and it will provide the organic compound to the fungus. And if it is blue-green algae, it will also fix the nitrogen which is very essential for the fungal growth. Okay? In return, fungus will provide shelter and it will also absorb various mineral nutrients along with the water and it will be given to algae to photosynthesis. According to their growth form, they can be crustose, they can be folios or they can be fruticates. Okay? So, lichens are said to be very good pollution indicators or environmental indicators. So, wherever there is pollution, we won't see these lichens. Okay? Especially where the areas are badly polluted with sulfur dioxide. So there, in those places, we can see the algae, but such association will be absent. It will get automatically eradicated from that area. Okay? The next symbiotic association of the fungi is with the roots of the plants. Called as mycorrhiza. So here the roots will get covered with the mass of woolly fungal growth around them. This mycorrhiza can be of two kinds. Ectomycorrhiza or endomycorrhiza. Okay? Ectomycorrhiza are those fungal species which will form the woolly outgrowth around the roots externally whereas endomycorrhiza are those species which will enter or infect the roots and they will produce the spores inside the root. Okay? So that is especially in the cortical region of the roots. So here what we see the blue colored structures are the fungal association with the cortex of these higher plant roots. Okay? So these are all stained and observed under microscope. So roots here will provide shelter and also it will absorb the organic substance from the soil and it will provide the food in the form of sugars to these 
fungus. Whereas fungus will increase the absorbing surface area for the roots in order to absorb water as well as minerals. So this way we see that the plants which are associated with mycorrhiza or such fungal infection will grow better than the plants which are not associated with the fungal association. Okay. The next topic is virus and viroids which were not included in five kingdom classification by R. H. Whitaker. So we will see what are the characteristics of these organisms that they could not be placed in the five kingdom classification. Okay. Virus have unique place in the living world. Okay. They are acellular. That means they do not have proper cellular structure, neither they have any metabolic activity which they can carry out in the free state. That means when they are free in the nature, they are not able to carry out any of the physiological or metabolic activities. Okay? So, they are neither prokaryotes nor eukaryotes. That means the organisms which have the characteristic of prokaryotic nature as well as eukaryotic nature is not seen in these viruses. Okay? So, virus, this was identified first in 1892 by Pasteur B.J. Albanoski. He had experimented on the tobacco plants and he called these viruses as venom. That is certain poisonous fluid which is released by these viruses. Okay, and these structures were smaller than the bacteria. Okay, so they were easily able to pass from bacterial proof filters. Okay, since they were very smaller than the bacteria. Okay, so these viruses they infect the tobacco plants, and that was identified by Pasteur in 1892. Later in 1898, Bejernik, he explained that these infected plants with the viruses, the extract can infect the other healthy plants too. So he named that fluid or poisonous fluid as contagium vigor fluidum. Contagium means which can pass that disease or infection to the other plants. Okay, so it was contagious. Later in 1935, W.M. Stanley, he explained about the structure of these viruses that they are crystalline in nature. You can see these crystals like structures and these crystals have proteins in them. That means these crystals are made up of proteins. Okay. And viruses are inert outside their specific host cell. That means these organisms when they are free state in nature, they are just inert or we can say they are inactive or dormant condition. Okay. Once they infect the host cell, then they will carry out the metabolic activity and it will multiply. So it will take the machinery of the other host organism. Okay. So these Viruses, they have the properties of both living as well as non-living things. That means when they are in free state in the nature, they are non-living. They act like non-living. But once they infect any host cell, since it will take the machinery of these host cell and will multiply, they will become the living things. Okay? So here we see when virus infects the living organism, it will pass its genetic material into these host cells. And once the genetic material is passed, it will direct the host cell to obey the blueprint of these genetic material. So they, these organisms will take this genetic material as if it's own and here the multiplication of viral particles will start. And this way it will infect the other cells too. Okay? So it infects the plants, animals, fungi as well as bacteria and 
the viruses that infects the bacteria are called as bacteriophage. So this is the bacteriophage, a virus that infects the bacteria. So we can see that virus are obligate parasite. Obligate parasite is the one which require a host cell to reproduce. So they will infect the cells and they will multiply in these host cells. So they have the nucleoprotein or hereditary material that is the nucleic acid called as DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid or they may have RNA, ribonucleic acid. And this nucleoprotein is the infectious part of these viruses. Okay? So, there are different forms of viruses which we see in the nature. Helical, cuboidal or binal. Here we can see it is the helical type of virus. Cuboidal indicates not exactly as a cube shaped structure but they can be polyhedral too. They can be circular too. Okay? Also binal very they will have both helical structure as well as cuboidal structure. For example, bacterial fit. Okay? And this is tobacco mosaic virus that is the helical type of virus. So there are two parts of virus, capsid and nucleon. Capsid is the structure that is made up of protein and it will act as an antigen which will harm the other organism, okay? So this is the capsid, what we can see, which surrounds the genetic material is capsid, okay? And these capsid have small round structures called as capsomeres, okay? So these are capsomeres and the whole structure we call it as capsid. So this is, these are the capsomeres. Also, some of the viral species, they have envelope around these capsid. You can see here, which is either made up of protein or lipid or also carbohydrates. So, we can see that there is envelope with the spikes that are present here. Okay. Here in bacteriophage also, we can see a peculiar structure with the head, neck and it will have the tails which helps to get attached to the bacterial cell, okay? Nucleoid, which is the other part of virus, it is the nucleic acid, nucleoprotein, which may be either DNA or RNA, but both DNA and RNA may not be present in these viruses. So they will have either DNA or RNA as the genetic material, which is infection. So here DNA can be either double stranded or single stranded. DNA double stranded is usually helically coiled structure this way. It can be also single stranded DNA in several uh, viruses which uh, for example uh, polyphage okay which will have only one strand of DNA. Then some viruses will have RNA as double stranded of similar kind but it is RNA. RNA is usually the single stranded structure but some viruses do have double stranded RNA. So the viruses which cause polio, hepatitis B or uh, mosaic virus in cauliflower, herpes or any pox virus they will have double stranded uh, DNA. Okay? And Rio virus or Rota virus or blue tongue virus will have double stranded RNA. And here are a few examples of viruses which have single stranded RNA but they can form double strand. Okay? So here is tobacco mosaic virus or potato mosaic virus, foot and mouth virus, SARS, which is well known influenza. Dengue, missiles, HIV virus, that is the AIDS virus, COVID-19, which we know what is the situation now, and cold, as well as retrovirus. For example, HIV virus is the retrovirus. So what do we mean by retroviruses? The viruses which has RNA, okay, can give rise to DNA, okay, with the 
the help of an enzyme called as reverse transcriptase enzyme. Okay. So usually DNA always gives rise to RNA and RNA gives rise to proteins. In any cell, okay, this in detail you all will be learning in molecular basis of inhabitants in 12th standard. So DNA gives rise to RNA, RNA gives rise to protein. But here the retroviruses, for example, HIV virus, here these viruses have RNA as genetic material. So they will go to the reverse direction where RNA will give rise to DNA and that DNA will infect the human cell and this DNA that is the viral DNA will get incorporated with the DNA of human genetic material and our cells will take that genetic material as if its own and there that's how the multiplication of these viral DNA will take place okay and therefore it will infect all the T lymphocytes of our body. Okay? So, the viruses which infect the plants are usually RNA single stranded. Okay? So, these are some of the examples wherein the virus which has single stranded RNA. And the viruses that infect animals including human beings have either DNA or RNA. We have seen so many examples. Okay? So here it can be single stranded or double stranded genetic material. The next is viroids which is an infectious pathogen and this was discovered by T.O. Diener. These viroids are smaller than virus. Okay. And they lack the protein coat. We had discussed about the protein coat. Such protein coat is absent in these viroids. Okay, and they are the short strands of circular single stranded RNA. Okay, so these are few different uh, models of the viroid structure, and these will infect the plants. Okay, and the disease is called as potato spindle tuber. Viroids won't allow the plants to grow properly, as it is shown here. The healthy plant. Chrysanthemum and the plant which is infected by viroids. So these viroids do not have any dormant phase as such what we had seen in the viruses. Okay. So that is all about the biological classification. So we have completed with kingdom Monera, kingdom Protista, kingdom Fungi with all their salient features and major classes. Also, we discussed about the virus and viroids which are not included in these classification and the symbiotic association of the fungi. The remaining kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia will be taught in the next lesson which is there in your textbook. Okay? So, I hope you all must have understood this chapter.